Am I gonna be in the way? Nope, you're good. Yeah. They should have a youth group. They should have a youth group softball team. Does this work? work? They should. They'd be so good. Woo! It yeah. works now. Hey, don't do that. Hey, I'm recording. Bro, what's your name again? I'm Micah. Is this Micah? Oh, Micah. No, this is for YouTube. Oh. Are you gonna put on YouTube? What's, what's your channel called? You flourish villains. You're actually gonna put on. Pretty clever. Are you gonna exit out this part? No. What? I don't know. Could you put? You could you put me on there? <laughs> uncut raw footage. What's up, Samuel? Get ready. I know. I have the AC on up here, and it's like. Why is your mom only in the I know, that's yeah. what I feel like. Good for you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. You're very old. Yeah, that's a nice one, too. Uh, really? Do you know me? Oh. JJ, can you get these? Oh, thank you so much. You didn't read it, did you? I did. Only a little. Okay. <laughs> I, I took pictures. You took some pictures? <laughs> They're going to be, I'm not going to pull them up on the screen. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. Look at his sin problem. He is going to be a Something here. Yeah. I did. That's what I thought too. Great. All right, how did you guys just break? How was your winter break? How many of you had some exciting things happen? Uh, only a handful. Okay, you too. Uh, we got a puppy. We got a puppy? Yeah. That's right. We've had enough. That's a big dog. Fantastic. I'm sure he's great to cuddle with him. So. Emma, what happened to you? Oh, um, <laughs> Sounds weird. Husband. What happened during your winter break? <laughs> what happened to you? Oh. 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 oh, that's right. I met your cousin. Yeah. yeah. Great. How was that? Was that a fun time? No longer with us. No longer with us. Sweet. Who else had Who else had a fun winter break? Cole. How many people got how many people got a PS5 for Christmas? How many people got something much cooler? No. Yeah, we got friends. We got friends. I got friends in the box. Alright. Anything else happen while we're in a break? Anything fun? We got out of school early. Well, that's yeah, we took an extra week off so we can go skiing. That. What do you mean? We never went skiing. Oh, Wait, fun. Yeah. the week before. Yeah. 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 What about the Dunn family? What did you guys do? We did ski camp, and then Joe and I have been working out every day, getting buff. <laughs> you doing 75 hard? No, we're doing tonal. Tonal? Okay. Legit. Every day? So, 10 days in now? We got a four Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Get a jump like start. three and a half weeks in. There you go. Days, so. Way to go. Way to go. Desire household? 
What about us? Anything fun person? happen pre winter break? Um, I don't think so. We weren't sick. Good. Woo! We oh, had the swims over for Christmas Eve. Yeah. Those are cool guys. Oh, oh those people? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I hear about them a lot. Especially but. the little kids. They're the best. Yeah. We tolerate the Oh, you're with Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a heart. That's why, that's why I'm here. All right, Hilton plan. Yeah, what did you guys do? So, our grandma came into town, and yeah, we just hung out at home. Okay. It was good. Hung out? Yeah. Did, did fun things? Jeremy, maybe you should ask everybody what they're doing on Saturday. Who? You guys? Yeah, when it's like frozen outside. What are you guys doing? Oh, you mean the kids or the Hilkemans? No, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go outside? Like, what are the Hilkemans like, 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 what am I doing Saturday? I need ideas. Yeah, who's, who's going to go for an outside walk on Thursday, Saturday? I'm going to see if my bit freezes. Well, it's Friday. Friday. It's supposed to be like, I don't think it's supposed to be, it feels like negative. Negative. negative four things, so I'd say it's I bet. Who, what do you guys do during a snow weekend? Nothing. <laughs> Sleep or nothing? Uh, play Call of Duty. Play Call of Duty. That's It's night. Well, whatever you find to do, whatever you find your hand to do, do it wisely. Don't go outside and make a snow angel. Like, dare your brother to walk outside after a shower. I think it's I think it's like that cold. Is it? I think it has to be boiling. Okay. Boiling like, water. I think it has to be boiling water. Yeah, and it's yeah. You, you take boiling no, water, so guys. Fun. It's cool. So take boiling water, put it into a pan, and throw it outside when it's that cold. Then your hand will get cold. I already did that. I mean, hot. Yeah. Do you guys know that? So we should not get it. Boil water. Boil water. Put it in some kind of pan and go outside when it's the very coldest. If you throw it into the air, it should turn into snow instantly. Can we put it on the channel for sure? Boil it I'll see what I can do. If you put cold water, it'll instantly boil. You want to be an editor? All right. Well, here's here's some announcements for you guys. You guys ready? Ears open? Sweet. All right. Since it's a new year, you guys are hopefully making some resolutions. I hope one of them is to read your Bible every single day or at least five days a week with the Abide Plan. How many of you guys are abiding, doing the Abide Plan? Fantastic. Love to see that. I love seeing people in the church following along. It's so great because when you're reading a chapter in Genesis 6 and someone else is reading the same chapter in Genesis 6, you guys can talk about it, like what the Lord's teaching you through it, and you guys can grow together. It's really quite wonderful if you do it together as a church. So we're going to do that more and more as a body and as disciples of Christ. And then, uh, so let's be an abide if you're not. And if you're not, you don't have to be an abide, but reading your Bible every day, that's a good habit to be into. So I encourage you to do that. While you're doing that, uh, something happened. I don't know if I decided to do it. I told the Sunday school that I'm doing it, but I'm posting something every single day on my Instagram and things like that on something about the Bible or doing a discipline or something like that. And I'm also creating more of a YouTube channel for our youth group. So like right now, this is being recorded and gonna go on our YouTube. That's youth, uh, what is it called? Youth Flourish Billings, that's our YouTube channel. So all of the sermons are gonna be on there. And hopefully, my idea is that if you guys ever want to share the gospel with someone or have a gospel conversation, then you can, hope, I'll try to make some kind of content where you guys can share that with someone else and invite them to youth group and maybe have them come to the church and hear the word. So that's something I'm working on. So ask your parents before you go online and create a YouTube account and then subscribe to that channel so that it gets that good one. But or only if you want. Just use your parents. Just yeah. ask your parents. Yeah, just use your parents. Or use your parents and have them do it too. Yeah, it really helps us out. I like that. That's right, yeah. Create 20 different YouTube accounts and all follow them too. You flourish. Great. So you can follow us on that social and just be wise when you go on there. Sound good? And lastly, with the end of the start of a new year, we say hello to new people and goodbye to some people. So, Brady, can you stand up in the back there? Hi. Everyone give Braden a hi, Braden. Hi, Braden. Everyone, welcome, Braden. He's going to be our new youth and missions intern for this year. So, yeah, absolutely. Jake? Yeah, we're just picking on Jake. Jake's never worked here. Wait, Jake, you worked here? 
I if I was, I didn't get paid. See, look, you guys, you guys stick around because they I didn't get paid. <laughs> Jake, they literally think you work here. Huh? They literally think you work here. You can't, you can't leave. Wow. Great. So Brave's going to be around here. He's going to be around here every week. So if you guys have questions on stuff, he's very good to ask. He's also going to be my, my helper around here and helping us, and he's going to see him a lot more around YouTube. So make sure you welcome him. Yes, Cole. Since you said he's your helper, does that mean he's helping with the, like, high school course or no? Yes. What? Yes. Yes, yes. Right now he will be. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if he goes. Good luck. So welcome, Brady, and then we're gonna say goodbye to Amanda in the back there. Amanda, just a little bit. Bye, Amanda. That's you. Tell us. Tell us your story. What's going on in your life? Um. So I'm. I've been in school for the last. I've been in school basically forever, but I'm in like 18th grade. Uh, uh, I am in my uh, second year of nurse practitioner school, and I'm just, next week I'll be starting clinical rotations, so I'll be doing that for the next year and a half. So I'll be working full-time, school full-time, clinical rotations, and everything else. So unfortunately, I can't commit to every Wednesday, and I just feel like it's, it would be better for me to say I just have to drop this one off and instead of being so flaky all the time. <laughs> Can you get my stuff? <laughs> yeah? I could, possibly, yeah. It's like maybe once a, one Wednesday a month I might yeah. be available. That would be amazing. Okay. You feel like the coordination going on here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Teamwork makes the dream work. Fantastic. Well, great. Well, we're excited to see you go. We're excited for that during this transition to, education's hard, but it's worth it. Uh -huh. okay. I think it's worth it. Joel, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Some days it was toil and sweat, I tell you. All the time. Well, cool. We're excited to see you be around. She's still going to be at the church, right? Still be here on Sundays. Yeah, yeah. well, as much as I can. Because I'm, I'm a nurse, so I work most right. weekends and holidays and all that good yeah. stuff. <laughs> and I work nights, so that doesn't help either. Mm -hmm. We've enjoyed having you around here. Appreciate you, yeah. your service, and your commitment. You guys have all been awesome. It's been a blast and really good getting to know all of you, all of you guys and playing downstairs and stuff. It's been good. So definitely enjoyed it. I'll graduate next spring. So good. So you have another me. year of this? Like a <laughs> uh, whole year? Uh, a little over a year. A little no, over a year. Yeah. Wow. It's like 760 hours. So it's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> all right. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> all his energy. Go for it. What? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, also Jake's leaving. What? What? I know, what? Okay guys, you know what? I just decided, I think I'm gonna stay. Uh, yeah! Okay. I just decided I'm gonna stay away. Cause like on my way over here I'm like, wait. I think I can actually do this. I think you can. Can he do it guys? I think he can do yes. it. Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna try it out. Yes. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how it works. What's, right, the, this, what's the tension? What's the pulling aspect? Um. Well, I'm I'm teaching now. School. And I'm teaching and doing school. So. And do. A lot of stuff. So. Yeah. 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 I can't anymore. So you don't see Jake I love it. Text I love being here. Text Jake if he's not here. Yeah. I love being here. Too, so. We do. We love you being here too. Yeah. So Jake's not leaving. He's I'm not leaving. Jake, not leaving. Jake, I can bring you family dinner if that helps. I was just going to see if we like all take turns you know, bringing dinner. Food, Whoa. And if that helps. Is that for everyone? Food. We'll talk <laughs> later about that. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. I'm literally working full time and going to school. Yeah, I'm also school. So. You're still here. Where's my food? You should just threaten to leave and then leave. <laughs> we, got, we got Brady now, so you can just take over. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Well, welcome everyone and goodbye, Amanda. Just Amanda. And I guess welcome, Brady. You're the only person here. Great. <laughs> All right, cool. You guys ready to learn? You guys ready to worship the Lord? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. That wasn't very confident. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm, great. God's good. Great. Okay, let's stand up and let's go to page number two. Page number two in your song books. One, two. Oh, my
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let's pray. Lord, you are wonderful and great and mighty and you are worthy to be sung of and to live for. Father, help us to praise you and to sing you in this room tonight and to, to grow in knowing you that it's this new year, this new a uh, year of youth flourish and, and the whole new year of the world. Lord, we grow to know you more, to experience your your love, your redemption, and to know you more and more. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing together with our voices. I'm going to need help because I'm a little raspy. <coughs> 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 God's word. Pass your books to the center. Pass your books to the center. After that, before that. The center. There you go. Thank you. Books, books, grand books. All right, everyone, turn your copy of God's word to the book of Exodus. Is that what you knew what I was going to say? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Exodus 1. At the very beginning. Here we go. 
Kalika. Kalika. Fantastic. All right, Exodus chapter 1. We're going to start there. We're going to review first. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, help us to know your word, to know who you are through it, and to see you and know you more. I've seen this great, this great story of redemption that you've done, that we all hear about, that we all know. Lord, help us to see it in a fresh way. Pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, so what have we been studying so far since the beginning of last September? The New Testament, the New Testament or the Old Testament? The old one. Which one, new or old? The new. Oh. The new. Oh. What's, where's Genesis in? Oh. 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 <laughs> old Testament. Great, we learned actually about Genesis, but the whole point of it is the story, right? God's word unfolds in a story, and it's the story of the Old Testament right now, of the OT, Old Testament. All right, can anyone remember what the story of the Old Testament, the story of the Bible, is all about? How could you sum it up in five words? You guys remember? Five words. You can do creation, fall, redemption. That's that's appropriate. I show something different. It's five phrases. It's blank, blank, through, blank, blank. Genesis. Cole? Kingdom, promises, through. Through the... What's the first two? No, kingdom, promises. Whose kingdom? God's kingdom. kingdom. There we go. Great. Through covenant promises. Fantastic. God's kingdom, through covenant promises. Great. So, the story of the Old Testament, the story of the Bible can be said as what? God's kingdom through covenant promises. Great. God's kingdom through covenant promises. And what's God's kingdom? God's kingdom is God's people, God's place, under God's rule and blessing. Great. So what's God's kingdom? God's people, God's place, under God's rule and so we see that unfold in stories in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, God's people, in God's place, a garden in Eden, under God's rule of the covenant and the cultural mandate to go out and expand, right? Under his blessing if they obey, but they don't. Here comes the curse and sin to the temptation of the serpent. And he says, did God really say that this would happen? And they listen to him, listen to the serpent instead of God. Listen to the serpents of God's word. And the whole world falls into oblivion. God's kingdom ruined, right? Looks like everything's looking bleak. And only the curse is here. But something happens in Genesis 3.15. God promises he's going to send one who's going to crush the head of the serpent. And who's going to redeem all of mankind. But there's going to be a conflict. There's going to be the seed, the children of Satan, of the serpent. And the children of God. And we see that played out in the very next chapter between which two brothers? Who comes next? Oh. Cain and Abel, right? Who kills who? Cain, Cain, Cain kills Abel. And what's that called when brothers kill each other? Murder. murder? There's a certain kind of murder. Do you guys remember? Manslaughter? No. no. Uh, if murdering another person is homicide, what's a brother killing a brother? Friendly fire. Genocide. It is. It is, it is friendly fire. But what's, friendly is it fun? Do you know what it's called? Fratricide. Right? It's fratricide. Brother killing brother. Right? And Cain shows brother killing brother. Friendly fire. That's what that means. Fraternity. Brotherhood. Fratricide. So Cain, as first, as John tells us later in the New Testament, Cain is a child of Satan. And Cain and Abel was a child of God. And Cain goes off east of Eden, somewhere else. There's the curse. But Adam and Eve had a new son named Seth. And on there they start to worship the name of the Lord. And here we go down all the other things that happened with Tower of Babel. And oh, before that, there's Noah, and there's a flood, and he saves himself through the ark. And then there's another covenant with Noah, the covenant of the whole creation, that God's going to not flood the earth again. And then we see the Tower of Babel, where people try to become like God, and God has to peek down really far and say, hey, look at this cute little tower, and destroys it and spreads people throughout the earth in different languages. And then we hear about who's the man of faith? Who's that one guy? Father 
Abraham. Abraham. Right. Father Abraham had how many sons? Many. Someone, someone's in here. Was it seven? Is that the word? No. Ian. One? He had one promised son. He had a couple different sons. He had Ishmael and some other ones later on. But yes, the one son is Isaac. So the promise goes through that through your seed, the whole nation, the whole earth is going to be blessed because of you, Abraham, right? Here comes Isaac. And who's Isaac's son? What's his name? Jacob. Great. Right. Do we have a Jacob in here? Is there a Jacob? No. Besides Jake. The oh. deceiver. The deceiver. The deceiver. <laughs> Jacob, who wrestles with God, right? And from Jacob, he has many sons. How many? Twelve. Twelve. Four. Which comes into the twelve tribes of? Israel. Israel. Great. Right. And what's one of those sons who gets, <coughs> has a real hard time with his brothers? Oh, okay. Who is it, Anna? Oh, Joseph. <laughs> and Joseph, his brothers really don't like him, so they yeah. throw him in a pit. And instead of killing him, they make money off of him, sell him to slavery to which place? Uh, Egypt. Where, did, where does he go, Samuel? Egypt. Egypt. He goes to Egypt. What happens to Joseph in Egypt? Uh, he becomes behind him. Yeah, command. second command, ultimately, and what does he do with his brothers? Does he, how does he help them? Forgive them. He does forgive them. He, uh, he's wise in the Lord, and he knows what to do when a famine comes. So he actually starts to save people, and they go to him for food, and they find out that Joseph's, in fact, his brother, who's in charge, and the great, beautiful story of redemption and uh, forgiveness play out in that story. And at the end of Joseph, at the end of Genesis, Right, if you're in Exodus, you have just one page over. If you're in Genesis, or you're in Exodus, look at Genesis 50 20. And you can say, uh, As for you, Joseph saying to his brothers, You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. And so I want you to think about this that Genesis and all of the Bible, you could not sum it up, but that's, that's a theme that runs through all of Scripture. Man meant things for evil. God meant them for good. Whether it's the fall, whether it's the flood, whether it's mankind's creation of a great high tower, or Joseph's evil intent, or Joseph's brother's evil intentions to kill him, God uses things for good. And you see that even play out more and more through the book of Exodus. Because Exodus, I'm sure everyone knows, is about plagues and about blood over doorposts and about the great Red Sea crossing, right, and Mount Sinai, all those things are really important. I want you to see that what people like Pharaoh and the Egyptians and other people we see, what they mean for evil, God means and uses to bring about good. Ultimately, even for us, right? Because if it wasn't for God doing good things, there wouldn't be an Israel, and there wouldn't be a Savior, and there wouldn't be redemption. So Exodus Think about that, that what people are meaning for evil, God uses for good. And Exodus shows, and it's a book trying to help us grow in. So if we're reading this book today as people in the 21st century and things that happened back in 1500 AD, so over, what was that, 3,500 years ago? It's a long time. But even to today, we can still be helped by it, encouraged by it, because Exodus wants to display and us to see God and know him more through what he says and what he does. Through his words and through his actions. So when we look at Exodus and you see the things that are familiar, look for the little keys where I get to see who God is here. He's, he's telling me something that still can help me know him more today. He's doing something here that still shows forth his character, even things he's done and still does today. So as we look at Exodus, let's let's dive in and let's kind of get some our footing here. We're just going to go through chapters 1 and 2, and then we're going to go through more and more as time goes on. But just in the next couple of 10 minutes, we're going to go through chapters 1 and 2. I'm going to give you some things to hang your hooks on. Are you guys ready? You guys got your Bibles ready? You guys ready to learn? Okay. Sitting forward, interested? Absolutely. <laughs> I, would hope, I, I, I think I heard your thoughts say yes, so we'll go with that. So... Chapter 1 starts with a genealogy, right? What's a genealogy? It is a... Uh, like a timeline? A bunch of names. It's a timeline. kind of says, like, this person had this person, had this person, that's this person, right? So we see God's people, Israel, in Egypt now. And as you turn the page from Genesis to Exodus, and this is not, even though it's just one page flip, it's 400 years in time. 
All right, so from Genesis 50 to Exodus 1, you move forward 400 years. That's four centuries. It's a long time. A lot's happened since then. If you look at verse 7, it says, But the people of Israel were fruitful, and they increased greatly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong, so that the land was filled with them. All right, so you see God blessing Israel, because the original command to Adam and Eve was to be what? Fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. That's the mandate for all human beings. And Israel's flourishing and doing that even in a land that's not their own in Egypt. And though Joseph brought them out of Canaan to save them, now they're dwelling in Egypt, there arises a Pharaoh. There comes a king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And when you look at Pharaoh, Pharaoh is this king, powerful man over all the earth. And he hates that this nation is growing and getting stronger because he fears, hey, if these people keep getting more and more powerful and great in number, they might join in with our enemies and actually take us over. So instead of getting rid of them or putting them to go back to their land, I'm going to enslave them instead and make them work for me and put them to awful, it says 13, ruthless, bitter, hard labor, right? For a long, long time. Time. Can you imagine being born in that time where your family is working their hands to the bone and dying for work? Like there's no days off, there's no rest. All you do is eat, work, and sleep. There's no leisure, there's no vacations, and you're born into this. And all you've known is that there's a God back in Canaan who told some old guy named Abraham that this uh, we are this promised nation. And yet now, we're suffering in bitter, harsh slavery. Doesn't sound like a great time to me. And it kind of seems like God's promises are not what they should be. Like, maybe they failed. Maybe they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because it looks like the evil guy, Pharaoh, you know what Pharaoh had on his, his helmet? Who his protector was? It was a snake. Just like a serpent back in the garden going against God. So Pharaoh's this, this son, this seed of a serpent, who even rules with a serpent on his crown and hates God's people and pushes them down in slavery. But in the midst of that, there's still this, this hope and things working, because it says that in verse 15, he told all the people in the midwives of Israel, say, if your people have kids, if they're, they have sons, kill them, make sure they don't give birth, and if they have daughters, make sure they live. So literally, it's worse than abortion is have your kid and then kill the kid. There's no, there's no joy here for kids. It's awful. But the midwives, the people, they feared God and didn't fear Pharaoh. And so they didn't listen to him. They actually lied and say, these people are just too strong and they have kids before we get there. We can't do anything with it. So they lie and they fear the Lord and God dealt mercy with them. So I want you to just, here's one point of application. Whatever time we live in, if things look bleak, like those who fear God and don't fear people in power or oppression or hate or love to do evil and hate what's good, like if we fear the Lord first, it may not look good right now, it may look good for us later, but those who fear the Lord, he deals well with them. In verse 20, so God dealt well with the midwives. He dealt well with people who feared God over fearing tyrants. So take that to heart. God does well with people who fear him and don't fear man. But Pharaoh goes on more and more. He says, I'm going to kill, like rather than have the midwives do it, I'm going to kill every single baby in Israel. I'm going to kill all these people. And if they're a son, I'm going to throw them into the Nile River. Right? So chapter 2, here comes our hero of this story. Who would you say, this is probably a spoiler because you know what chapter it's in, who is the greatest figure in the Old Testament? Old Testament. God. <laughs> Old Testament. Moses and Noah. David or Joseph. I think those are all Abraham, Noah, David, Joseph. I think those are all great characters. People have said that probably the greatest figure in the Old Testament is Moses. Moses. He's this guy that comes in as the instrument of redemption for all of Israel. That without him, there'd be no Israel because they'd be annihilated. And without him, there'd be no law at Sinai. Without him, there'd be no 
temple and rules for living. There'd be no first five books of the Bible. So Moses is an important key figure in the Old Testament. So here comes Moses, born as a kid, to the house of Levi. And his mom has him. He's ever had a baby, like a newborn. Who's had a newborn in their house recently? Okay. Oh, like recently. Recently? Okay. <laughs> All right. Newborns, you can kind of keep them quiet for a little bit, but soon enough they get really strong lungs. They start crying a lot more, so she can't hide her son anymore. So she puts him in this basket or an ark, you can say. As is actually the same word. She put him in an ark, just like Noah, and released him to the chaos of the Nile River. <clears throat> Pray that the Lord would do his work. And he does. He just so happens to bring Moses in that basket to the daughter of Pharaoh. And even though <coughs> Pharaoh's daughter, who is her dad, literally would be killing kids, she has compassion on him. And her heart just melts for this crying baby and says, I have to do something. I have to take him in. I have to save him. And his sister, Moses' sister, looks from the bank. Go gets his mom. She takes care of him later on. Then Moses is put into the house of Pharaoh, and he's raised as a prince. Right? For 40 years of Moses' life, he's trained like an Egyptian, walks like an Egyptian, he <laughs> speaks like an Egyptian, he knows all the Egyptian stuff. He lives like an Egyptian. Yet, he's, a, he's an Israelite, he's a Hebrew. So, for 40 years of his life, he lives this way, he's educated this way, but then he, he still knows that he's uh, a Hebrew, and he... Moses just has this sense of justice. He loves to defend the little guy. He loves to defend those who are weak and oppressed. He loves to do what's right. Because he sees his people being mistreated, and he's so aggravated and angry about it, he goes and kills the Egyptian who's hurting his son, or hurt, hurting his brother as a Hebrew, and thinks that this is the time I'm going to start setting my people free. But someone sees him, Pharaoh hears about it, he's going to kill Moses, so Moses flees into the desert, into Midian for 40 years, becomes a shepherd, has a, has a wife, has some kids in Midian, and has the same sense of justice that he was. So Moses steps in the scene, this important guy, who comes from a prince in the palace of power, to now be a shepherd in the desert for 40 years of his life. And here's one, another application for you guys right now. That whatever, just like Genesis 50, verse 20, all things that people mean for evil, God uses for good. In your life, everything you're going through, God uses and shapes to build you up to the man and woman to be used in the way that God sees fit for building and expanding his kingdom. As for Moses, he is trained in all these ways. He was trained to watch after really dumb sheep in the wilderness for 40 years, like we'll have to do again in his life, and he becomes, he's built up into this man to lead these people out of slavery into freedom to worship the Lord. So whatever you're going through in your life still, it's, it's God's using you and making you the man or woman to be used for such situations like this, whatever he calls you to. And lastly, in verse 23, let's end here. It says, during, look at verse 23 with me, chapter 2. Read along with me. It says, during those days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry was for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. God knew. And God remembers his covenant promises. God even told Abraham, 400 years ago, in Genesis 15, 13 through 14. So your people are going to be placed not their own. They're going to be land of slavery for 400 years, but I will remember them, I will hear them, and I will rescue them and redeem them and bring them as my own treasured possession. Can we all go to Exodus 19 really quick? Exodus 19. In verse 5. You could say, in, in the book of Exodus, okay, here's, just remember this for later, we have kind of three parts. One is 1 through 15, or 1 through 18, sorry. Kind of middle bridge, that's chapter 19, and the rest of it, 
the law and everything else, it's 20 through 14. All right, make sense? Clear enough? Mm -hmm. Yes? No? Yep. Yep, great. So 19 has this kind of bridges things. You're like, here's what the purpose is about, right? You guys ready? This verse 4 through 6. It says, you yourself, God's talking here to all of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples, for all of your is mine. You shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you will, shall speak to the people of Israel. Right? If you listen to my covenant, promises I make with you, I'm going to make you a kingdom, a priest, kingdom, who represent me to the entire world. That's the whole point of Exodus. God's going to remember his promises from of old. He's going to make promises with Israel to be this kingdom. And covenant promises, and he's going to say, I'm going to make you this kingdom to show my glory throughout the whole world. And Moses is going to be the guy to do that. And so you guys know all the story. We'll stop here tonight, but think about it this week. Think about the way God uses hard circumstances, 400 years of slavery, 40 years in the desert, hardships, struggle, dark times, to bring about light, salvation, and a kingdom. God does those things even today. Whatever is happening in the whole world makes me nervous when I think about it. Honestly. If I watch social media, I'm nervous. Watch the news, doesn't make me happy. But when I read this, I know God's, God hears, God sees what's going on. I can trust that he has a good plan. For today, and for tomorrow, and for the rest of our days. <coughs> so as we, as we go into Exodus, think about these things. In the dark times, God still plans things for our good. He works out things for our good. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, help us to see the story of Exodus, even though it's, it's old and it's, it's uh, things we, we hear about a lot and know from Sunday school or from movies. Lord, help us to see it afresh and anew with, with eyes of faith. Help us to, to know you through it more and to, uh, to trust you for the plans you are working out and the things behind the scenes that we can't see or understand. You work. You are working. You see. You know. And you're doing something. That's much more awesome than we could ever plan or orchestrate. Help us to see it with the eyes of faith. I pray in Christ. Amen. 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 All right, let's go to our groups, guys. Leaders, I don't have questions, so that's that's all on you. Joel's always got good questions. Joel does. Jeremy, you're slacking I know. <laughs> Dude, you would have gotten me so good. I'm up you. No, me, you. Where do six years go? Um, you're going to go with uh, Joel. Wow. That's final. that is cut down and all around and will say he will do things and they will never come to be. So having a father in heaven that is faithful should be so good.
on life where God has shown his faithfulness to you?
it's sometimes easy to feel abandoned by him. I guess in my own life sometimes. Um, like if I don't feel like I have a bad day, like a, a bad um, walking with the Lord during the day. You know, like I haven't read my Bible, those sort of things. I can feel it's easy to feel like he's, you know, turned his back on me a little bit. Um, but then he'll in some way remind me like that that's not why he loves me. He doesn't love me because I read my Bible every day and, and do that sort of thing. He loves me because he loves me. Like he, ch he, chose, he chooses to love me. And um, he'll remind me of that. And in that way, he is faithful to us. Even, even when we're thinking things wrongly um, and failing him. Yeah. 
Oh, that's not even why you show up. <laughs> there might be something Pastor has for you, or you might actually bring something to the whole group. You don't know. You will make a mistake. You will sin. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> be able to make it work but just my yeah. schedule is just insane I look, I look at my schedule and I just want to start crying it's like I have to fit sleep in there somewhere <laughs> sleeping is good <laughs> what about meals <laughs> that's the key to maybe uh, some bars <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah, this last semester was where it really kind of started getting hard in school. Um, it was a lot more challenging and a lot involved a lot more studying and stuff. And, 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 uh, prescriptions and all that stuff. That, kind of um, that is a lot. I feel like it's a whole new position that you have to learn. But I don't plan on, plan on learning too much of it. I'm kind of anti pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so, seem to put my head down, get to school, and then I can practice medicine the way that God.
get it. But what I love about youth group is you guys are all, I mean, maybe some of your parents had to come, but like, you're all in it together. And you're not, there's so many things you still have to figure out at your ages. You're not going to have it all together, but you're on this, it's like you're on a journey together. And you, it's iron sharpens iron, so you guys get to sharpen each other as you grow up. And so, don't be afraid to lean back into your sisters in Christ here. Because be vulnerable. I got uh, 